Coach, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Glad to hear it. Good to be in the office. Got the the candle lit. Good good aroma going in here and love coming in because of all the staff. We get to see all the, I mean, guys that I got to play with or work with prior to coming in in the morning. So there's always good energy here in the morning and all throughout the day. So uh, looking at the the team, you obviously lost a lot of, uh, you know, veterans last year. Um, how do you go about replacing that experience and, and that leadership? Well, I, I really, I, I think there's a lot of guys that had some touches right there at the end. Um, you know, Greg Fuchs and, and Dernetti and Boyd, guys that got some, uh, high level experience in the postseason, and I think that really fueled their fire uh, throughout the summer. You know, those guys were able to go out and train this last summer as well, and built a ton of confidence. And coming in the fall, having gotten at, at bats and such, um, really, you saw a big jump in their game as well. And sitting down and and connecting with them, uh, each and every one of them wants to take on more of that leadership role. So they're putting themselves out there in practice, um, taking on challenges, failing, which is great. Failure means that, you know, we have an opportunity to learn. Um, so, uh, yes, a lot of older guys leave, but, you know, look at our possibility of our starting rotation with uh, Finnings, Jerpy, and Frisch. We got other guys like Townsend and Kamats that are guys that can be uh, starting as well or definitely handling the midweeks. Um, so there's some starting pitching depth and, you know, Verberg coming back and watching how he's uh, mentoring a lot of the other guys, older and younger, um, and taking care of business himself, I think brings a, a key element, especially when it comes to mentality. Verb has always had a very competitive mentality. You know, I, I was joking with him yesterday, actually, at practice. Um, you know, Victor Quinn was out and he was throwing and um, he, he sped through the inning pretty quick, which was great, filling up the zone, something that he's really working on. And everyone started chanting one more, you know, we want to see one more hitter. And I go, oh, that, that's the Verb chant. Verb always wants one more. I go, don't, don't get used to that. You don't want one more in the season. But he always, in practice, wants to, you know, lead by example. He wants to be challenged. And, um, you know, he's working on being efficient through his innings as well when he's getting those opportunities to go out there. But he wants to keep attacking hitters. He wants to keep touching the ball, which is a great sign. That means he's healthy um, and his, his mindset's in the right spot. So we do have leadership in the right, in the right places. Um, Duke Hart has been playing a lot more short. Uh, this last fall and watching him transform from being at third base to being up the middle. Now it gets him up and uh, I guess out of his squad a little bit more and he's able to roam and communicate and see the field a little differently. Uh, we've noticed a big change in his demeanor as well. Um, as well as, you know, a guy behind the dish with Gavin Logan, um, you know, who hasn't seen a, a ton of playing time the last several years, but, how he goes about his work uh, builds a lot of respect from all those around him. And really all of our catchers have been able to do that. And our pitching staff, it's a, it's a really good bond and mix of character. Um, and, you know, but obviously nothing, like you never know until the, the games start rolling and the umpire says play ball. But I think there's some solid leadership around. You mentioned the, the staff and that really I think that has potential to be the strength of this team but how would you describe what they bring in the in the kind of the versatility of those guys and 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 you know what what that group adds to, to this rotation because obviously losing Kevin Abel is a lot but it seems like you, you're not going to drop off much there well yeah I mean you know Jerp continues to I mean, what the guys have done in the weight room uh, right out the gate with our, our new strength coach, Mike, has been remarkable. Um, our, our, their overall power and body mass, the weight gain has been incredible. Uh, so some of the ideas and how he uh, is able to get these guys to respond in the weight room, love what, what it's doing to their bodies and watching them swing and throw, everything's coming off uh, with a lot of force. Um, and so you look at a guy like uh, Cooper, 
and his consistency on the mound, his breaking ball, he's sharpening each of those tools. But, you know, we're seeing in the fall, ball really jumping out of his hand, moving in and out um, and showing some great demeanor on the mound. I, I think the jump that he's made from last year and, you know, he had a pretty, some pretty solid outings last year showed that he has this stuff. Now it's just a matter of getting from five innings. Hey man, let's go seven, eight, maybe nine, nine innings, you know? So filling up the zone and pitching to contact is going to help a lot with that. Uh, the jump Frisch has made with his off speed as well. That guy already is about as strong as it gets. If anything, we're like, Hey, let's lighten up, wait a little bit and start moving it quicker. Um, and and big Phoenix, uh, a guy who you look back two years ago and it, how he handles himself, how he walks, talks and acts has changed drastically to what it is this year. Um, I think the, the confidence in himself, the just the belief that he has the stuff and he can go out and lead these guys uh, has changed a lot in understanding who he is. So he's been another guy, again, hitting the weight room, transforming his body, uh, throwing the ball, understanding what stuff is coming out of his hand and how it is uh, perceived by the hitter, you know, putting more, I guess, more tilt to his fastball. Uh, things got a lot of rides. So being able to throw a sinker and let that ball, you know, have more tilt than throwing a four seamer, letting it ride and flatten out um, is, is a big, you know, aha moment for him. And also, consistency with his slider landing his curveball from two years back to this last year he shortened it up tight like made it tighter so it wasn't bending as much um and now finding that a slider from his tilt uh with the guy who naturally cuts a fastball the slider just seemed you know to fit uh his his, his arm action and mobility um and now we're seeing just a uh, what it's doing to our hitters uh, from the fall and, and early uh, this winter prepping for the season is, is something else. And so just based on those three guys alone, you know, you feel like you're in a good spot, obviously, you know, knock on wood for health and, um, you know, consistency, both physically and mentally. Hey coach, uh, how has that freshman class developed over the course of fall ball and now into the new year? Um, you know, I'd say on, on both sides, very exciting, really, you know, on the position player side, you know, uh, Guerra over, he's been playing the corners. Uh, we move him up the middle a little bit, keep his feet moving. Uh, but he's got a lot of thunder in the bat. Wilson Weber, like I said, was Frisch. Weber's probably one of the strongest guys on the team. Um, and arm strength is, is something special too. That guy from his knees can, probably, you know, not easily throw it to second base on a line, but probably play catch with the center fielder on a line too. Uh, hopefully he doesn't have to do that very often though. we like just keeping it to the infield. Um, and then uh, on, on the arm side, um, Victor Quinn has made some really big jumps as far as his command and just getting the guys comfortable is a, a really big part of this piece. Um, I think that the best version of ourself comes out when we finally take like exhale number one, right. And start seeing our surroundings for what they really are and understand that we do belong here. And so you're seeing a lot of that happen at the end of the fall. And especially now when you guys are coming back from Christmas break and they've just got done putting in all their hard work, um, so it's been exciting to see him and Kamat uh, on the mound as well. Guy who throws three pitches consistently for strikes. Um, now we're just focusing on uh, better quality of strikes, right? getting it down in the zone a little bit more, starting to work the edges. Um, but he he can fill it up. And I, I saw him last summer and in the fall, it was 90 to 94. And um, the ability to do that and mix your pitches is, is – It'll help you. It'll help you put up put up a lot of outs. But and not only that, controlling the running game. Guy who was, you know, in one six, one seven range, and now uh, as I was timing him over at first the other day, working with the runners, you know, is consistently at a one three. So it's going to help control the running game. So to still execute high quality pitches and control the run game is big. I think 
another freshman that there, there's going to be a lot of buzz. Well, uh, Bazana, Travis, our Australian, <laughs> he's a, uh, he's got a real bat. He's competitive. You watch him in practice and he's, there isn't a pitch that he lets go by without being extremely focused. Um, Darwin's just like everybody else getting after the guys with the infield stuff, making sure they understand situations and the, and the fundamentals, you know, last year was, uh, great to see, um, you know, putting up a 982 fielding percentage collectively, which is, uh, quite impressive, but Darwin wants to continue to improve there. Um, and, you know, Trotsky, another, another middle infielder where we can really put anywhere, just a real baseball guy. We've said that before about, um, Boyd, you know, Boyd was a, um, corner middle infielder. We moved him over to first. Now he's running around the outfield. That guy can do anything. He played pretty much every position last year in summer ball and hit over 300. The guy is a baseball player. You look at Trotsky, that guy will do anything to compete. Um, so at the end of all of our practices, we always have some kind of competition and, you know, you get a guy, an older guy like Brock Townsend or, or Meckler who are just mentally focused and you, no matter how much you heckle them, you can't get them out of their, um, out of their intent to win. And you see a guy like Trotsky feeding off that and having the same characteristics and it gets you excited for what he's going to do this year and in the future. Do you, I know it's early, but do you envision Bazana being uh, your starting second baseman? Is that kind of how you're rolling into things here? I think he's got a good chance. I mean, you know, obviously, uh, Dernetti is a guy who worked his, his tail off all year last year, waiting for that moment. And when he took advantage of it, he did really well. Um, you know, played solid defense and, you know, had some, some big at bats, uh, driving in some runs. It's nice to have two guys that are very elite. I think Dernetti has the ability right now to go second, short, or third. Um, and you trust him. He's the kind of guy that's always focused. So it, whether he's starting or coming in at the end of the game, you know what you're going to get out of him. Um, and that's the best version of himself. You know, Bazana has a electric bat. I'd say he right now stays on the, the right side of the infield. I know he loves getting on the left side and uh, getting behind some throws and you know, which is good, but right now with how he's moving and everything, um, you know, Darwin's really keying in on him and making sure he's the, uh, the best second baseman he can possibly be before we start jumping around and trying to do too much. So especially for freshmen, it can be good to simplify as opposed to say, hey, come in and do a little bit of everything and uh, try everything, but be a master of none. And so right now uh, he's handling that position really well, communicates a lot, as you'll see if you're out of practice or in the games, or if you watch any of the Knights games last summer, he, he communicates. Is he a guy that you might uh, roll in at DH or you said right side, but I don't, I don't see him at first base. Is he a guy you might do that to spell him a little bit, uh, you know, and work Dernetti in there? You know, it, it could be. He's, he's, Bazan's got the kind of bat that you definitely want in the lineup all the time. Um, he, I've seen him drag and push for hits, seen him steal bags. I've seen him hit ball in the gap and I've seen him leave the yard. So you can do a little bit of everything. Um, I think if we look at the overall depth again, without playing any real games yet, um, optimism is extremely high. There's some guys like TJ Wheeler that have a really big bat. You got to find a way to get him in there. Uh, Fuchs has been more and more impressive uh, how he's controlling his body and, Physically, he's driving the baseball. Forrester, the kind of stuff that he can do. Melton, um, Bazana, Meckler, Boyd. Really, you get excited talking about the lineup and the possibilities, and then you step back and you're like, wait, there's only so many spots in the lineup for these guys. How are you going to put them all in? So I think it gives us uh, depth, especially when you're dealing with, you know, COVID still and, and the possibility of someone getting sick and needing to have some depth. Um, and you never know with with injury or anything else that can happen. So depth is always key um, for each of our guys. The importance of showing up, never knowing when their their spots going to be, uh, their names going to be called, but being ready for it. And Dernetti did a great job of that last year. So um, it's going to be a good race. It's great to have competition rather than having one guy saying, "Hey, I'm holding this one down." Uh, everyone knows that 
the, all the spots are still open. Uh, Mitch, once the games get going, what, what are the biggest things you're going to be looking for in the in the non-conference uh, schedule to to know that you have a chance to contend uh, for the Pac-12 title? We got some some great competition. I mean, Long Beach State has a non-conference uh, series this year. Um, Irvine again, um, also very solid competition. I mean, you look at the schedule and you, you get excited for it because you're playing some good competition. Um, really, I, I always like just the consistency aspect. I know, you know, week one, we get down to Arizona, it's going to be a little different weather. Uh, and guys are going to be excited. They're playing on dirt, first game of the year. So there's going to be a ton of energy uh, out there. I want to see consistency. I want to see confidence. And when I say consistency, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, the Friday night game or if it's a Tuesday game. I want to see guys going out there with the same intent that they want to go out there and 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 be focused and win and compete. Um, and so I'm I'm going to be paying very close attention to our young guys. I'm going to be paying very close attention to our older guys, just how they act. I don't think when the season comes around, you try to overcoach everything. You're just checking effort and attitude, and all the work that they've been doing to this point. Um, you got to let that go out there and and take over. So maintenance is big and understanding what these guys need on a day-to-day -day basis from our end, but also from their end so that they can show up and be prepared to go out there and compete. Um, and, you know, obviously early on, uh, starting pitchers are still building up. So it's not like they're going to be going as deep in the game. So you're going to get to see a lot more of the, the bullpen and see what those guys can do, which I think is extremely important, um, knowing what you have coming out of the pen to finish up some games. Mitch, things changed for you guys quite a bit when when Malcolm when Melton uh, obviously went down with his shoulder. Is he fully healthy and, and playing now? And and assuming he is, just how would you describe his importance to, to this team? He is healthy. He's full go now. Um, been watching him do his progression, and for him and every other competitor that's out there, when you're coming back from some kind of uh, setback or injury. You just want to go, you know, it's, you put, you put a timetable together and say, you know, this is what we're thinking. And this is where you should be with your mobility, your range of motion. Everyone wants to beat it. Yeah. You don't just want to go through the finish line on time. You want to beat it. So constantly trying to uh, pull the reins a little bit, make sure he's progressing. Um, knowing that he was going to be fully healthy right about this time. Uh, obviously dealing with the ups and downs, you know, every time you progress forward, typically you have a little setback because your body hasn't been there in a while. He looks strong. He, I think right now, the only thing he's, he's really getting back into is his top speed. Um, but watching him do steel breaks the other day and working at stuff from first and second during batting practice, He's, he's, he's almost moving like, like his old self as far as foot speed, um, which is very encouraging. We're just going to get him to keep sliding feet first instead of head first, jump around. But for a guy like him and Meckler, those guys don't know anything other than 150%. Um, but watching him swing, hitting off the velo machine, breaking ball machine, coach pitch, um, it, you know, obviously everyone stops what they're doing and watches because they're going over the scoreboard and clearing the bleachers and uh, coming off pretty hot. So if you're on the field, you don't want to get hit by one of those lasers. So it's nice to see how he's walking out of the turtle after a good round or a bad round is is the same. Um, you know, tugs his belt loop and, you know, moseys around and gets ready for the next round, which is great. Um, he's the kind of guy that, like I said, everyone's going to watch. Because he, he's hyper athletic. He cares. He wants to win, and he's not afraid to. When he really has something on his heart, he's going to go tell everybody. So, um, good that he's healthy. Hopefully, he just continues to uh, breathe and trust how good he is, and not try to force anything. And that's where I think he made stuff happen in a big way last year. He finally said, "You know what? I am good." Actually, I am great, and I'm going to allow myself to be great. So, Coach, when you look back at the accomplishments this team had last year, making it to a regional final, setting the school record in strikeouts, 
I guess just how happy were you with what this team was able to accomplish, but, but also, you know, what areas are you kind of looking to improve on this year? Well, um, obviously making it to a regional, that's all right. And the way that the guys finished, I was very proud of how they, you know, being in the losers bracket and then continuing to fight until the very end. And you could tell right when the, the game's over and we're on our way home. You just look at all the guys' faces and you can tell how much it meant to them. I was watching my son at wrestling practice the other day. He's a little guy, he's only nine. But one of the most impressive things that kind of had me a little choked up was he kept getting knocked down on his butt, but he kept getting back up. You know, and I watched like for 15 minutes of wrestling this other bigger kid. He just kept getting knocked down. He kept getting back up. And it choked me up to the point where I called my old wrestling high school coaches and said, gosh, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for keeping me in this thing, teaching me life lessons. Um, you know, and, and so watching how much it meant to these guys last year, you knew they were going to go out and train. You knew they were going to fight and, and try to make the most out of this next year. Um, so there was some some good there obviously our, our aspirations are not getting to a regional it's it's winning it winning it all in omaha and making sure that we're uh, maximizing each and every guy uh, so that the greater good we're accomplishing our family goals um I, the strikeouts yeah they're awesome we're, we're developing stuff that, that has some proof that hey you know what we're doing with analytics and what we're doing with pitch design and and what coach Dorman and just the, the overall process, how everyone's communicating is, is good. Um, obviously free bases is something we've talked a lot about and it just goes to um, confidence, intent, attacking the zone, um, understanding the vertical as opposed to the horizontal zone and how we attack hitters, We're not trying to be too fine where most chases happen. Uh, so it's just teaching guys uh, how to pitch in which situations. And that goes a lot into what our catchers do too, how they set up, you know, knee using the knee is a big thing now, but are we kicking out or are we staying in tight with our, with our left leg when our right knees down and that creates a smaller target for the pitcher to hone in on. So it's just understanding our guys um, attacking the zone. What I'd like to see us do a better job when anytime you get more strikeouts, you're going to get more free bases from walks. Um, but what I like to see our guys do a better job this year, um, pitches, pitches per at bat. Uh, I like to see that decrease. Um, and that just shows me that Oh, two, one, two, we're attacking as opposed to, uh, you know, expanding and going for the strikeout next thing, turning it into a two, two count. I'd like to eliminate as many three ball counts as possible. So you can't walk anybody unless you get three balls. Right. Um, so we talk a lot about free bases and how to prevent them. And, you know, as opposed to just saying what the problem is, we need to develop some remedies. And that's how we've been preparing in the bullpens and uh, on defense as well. Uh, fielding percentage, you know, defense, pitching and defense, big things. Don't allow any runs. Uh, so we've done a ton of work on the fundamentals. All the guys never have to worry about it. They're always going to go in their free time and go hit in the cage. It's just part of the culture here. You can go up to the cages at nine o'clock at night and there's a handful of guys up there, got the machine rolling and they're hitting, right? They're always going to do it on their own time, but making sure that our practice time is developed around the, the small things that they're not going to work on base running awareness. You know, we only had what 40, 45 stolen base attempts last year. Um, and I'm not saying we need to go out there and, and do more of that because you need to have a high uh, success rate when you're stealing bags. If you get thrown out at second with nobody out, your you know, probability of scoring just went down by like 70%. It's not good, right? So we need to be smart on the bases. And what we're working on right now is uh, developing more awareness and timing and rhythm so that we can be better at balls in the dirt, create more chaos for the, the defense, the pitcher and the catcher and the middle guys, uh, getting them moving. Um, so you know, 38 out of 45 or whatever it was stolen bases uh, last year. I don't anticipate it being high or anything like that. Uh, I do anticipate us getting more ball and dirt reads. I do anticipate us putting more pressure uh, because actually the speed we have with Melton, Meckler, uh, Bazana, Trotsky, Gretler's not afraid to run. Um, Gavin's great with ball and dirt reads and being aware out there as well. Uh, Boyd. You know, I, I do see us 
Um, I do see the, our opponents, uh, pass balls, wild pitches, um, increasing this year. If we do continue to our job. So when we're at practice, we got to keep focusing on those things that we know they're not going to be working on on their own. The, the base running, um, IQ and awareness, you know, filling up the zone, avoiding three ball counts. Um, I could see those as being some big things for us. Hey, Mitch, we got 21, 22 minutes into this without the word or the phrase free bases getting in there. So nice work. How about that? I'm waiting, waiting for the season. It's a, we'll start it off. If you can get like a t-shirt that says free bases with an X free through base. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, maybe you won't need to. Maybe the pro, you know, it will just, it will just vanish. It, your, <laughs> all your wishes will come true. Hey, uh, is, is Verb, it's safe to say Verb's in line to replace Mully there uh, as a closer? I'd say he's he's going to be a big stopper for us. I mean, to say there's always a guy in the ninth inning, sometimes the the sixth and seventh inning are the biggest innings, right? You gotta you gotta have a big shutdown. I think what what Mitch understands is anytime you need me, I'm ready to go out there and get outs. I'm going to give you my best. Um, I think he's the guy. I, we got another guy, Carpenter. That guy's not scared of anything. You know, watching him uh, pitch in Juco and watching how he's done in here in the fall and everything, he's not scared of any situation. He wants to go attack and get out. But a guy like Verb, he's been here. He's a cornerstone. And he said he lets everyone know, like, I want the ball in any situation. And he'll, it's hard to take it from him because he wants it so stinking bad. And he's going to create a fuss from it. But um, you know what his intentions are. And that's to help the guys win. You know, that's all he wants is to help the guys win and he he's not afraid to put everybody on his back and do so so he can handle those big ninth inning situations he wants them that's a big part of the battle um, so obviously losing uh kevin last year opens up a spot at the top of that uh of the rotation or, or what makes you kind of feel confident uh that you're suited and ready to kind of jump in there and, and be the ace of the staff right um well, obviously last year was less than ideal with the way it ended, but um, I know we reflected on what we did last year and what we could improve on. And um, it was basically the free bases and the, the two out stuff. And um, we've obviously been working on it, being more consistent in those situations. So um, obviously in bullpens, working on being more consistent with the fastball, obviously, and then um, landing those, those off-speed pitches as well and staying in the zone more consistently is what we've been harping on this off-season and um, we've been doing a good job at it. So that's definitely what we've been working on to the fullest extent, obviously, is limiting those free bases uh, within lives, scrimmages and stuff like that. So um, we're ready on that part of the, the spectrum. So other than that, I think everything else was a strong suit for us. and We're ready to go. Obviously, you strikeouts is, is something you you bring is it is it a little bit of checking that and maybe it, trying to get more ground ball outs or putting the ball out there just so you can last longer into games is that just part of the growth yeah yeah I think I was just trying to do too much in certain situations was one of my weaker spots in the game but um you know definitely being more efficient throughout the whole game and um, trying to go deeper into the ball game is obviously what you want out of your starter and saving those arms in the pen is what we want and um Kind of going off of that later in the season will be uh will be less less um kind of burnt. I know all the arms were kind of kind of gassed towards the end of the season. So um, yeah, again those those efficient outs, four pitches or less per batter is something we want to do. So definitely, yeah, being more efficient. Here in Mitch talk, I expected you to walk out and look like Forrester or Melton or something working with Mike uh, in the off season. It sounds like you, you put on, <laughs> you look the same to me, but you're, you're high. Yeah. Do you, are you stronger? Are you bigger? Like, can you, can you break that down for us? Yeah. Yeah. So last year I was probably around 189, 190 um, before Mike got in here, Mike Henrichs. And then uh, he got in here obviously during the summer. And I mean, the guy is just, he's amazing. He knows what he's doing. Um, guy the guys i mean does everything to the fullest extent he's he's a good guy great guy knows what he's doing with each individual and what they need so you yeah, know i probably gained about nine or ten pounds over the summer and right now i'm fluctuating anywhere from 195 to 200 so um yeah definitely in a good spot to start the season we're ready to go so how does that show itself how does that that body change and that strength show itself when you're on the mound I think it's just overall strength, obviously, and then the endurance as well. Um, we've been conditioning um, pretty hard. And so 
getting that cardiovascular stuff built up and getting ready to go deep into ball games is what we've been working towards and making sure we have that strength to, to stay durable throughout the season. Cooper, I know you're not out there looking for accolades or anything, but you were named preseason All-American. How, how cool is that to get that kind of recognition? Yeah, it's obviously, I mean, pretty cool. But at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's um, not something you really harp on. You know, it's not something you're, you're looking to go for. It's at the end of the day, you want to win ball games, or at least that's what I want to do. And I think the only stat that I want at the end of the year is have zero losses on the, on the record. So that's what I'm going for. Hey, Coop, you, you got to uh, be next to and, and watch Kevin Abel for, you know, years, uh, and especially last year with his return. I wonder, you know, what did you learn uh, watching him? And, and you know, I'm sure you guys talked constantly, but getting to be around a guy like that with his experience and his talent, what did he teach you and what, what did you take away from him? Right. I think, honestly, most development comes from the people around you when you come to college. I know the coaches do a lot of stuff for you, but at the end of the day, it's kind of just watching them and doing what they're seeing, what they do and how they go about their business. You know, I, I came in here as a freshman, just watching those starters um, go about their business on a daily basis um, through their routine. And I think Kevin was a, a big guy in that, in that um, aspect of the game is watching how he went about his business throughout the days and what he did throughout the week for, um, building up for his start day on Friday. So um, I think it was just the visual stuff, learning from what he did throughout the week and getting ready for when he went out there and competed. So, What do you like most about this uh, pitching staff? I think we all have that, that grittiness this year. You know, no one's complaining about anything. We're ready to go out there and just play the game how we can. Um, nothing mentally we need to work on. We're all ready to go. Um, physically, mentally, like I said. So um, we're just excited to get out there and start our season in Arizona. Anything else for Cooper? Yeah, is there a mentality change when you know you're going to kind of be the ace of, of the staff? Does anything change with that, or are you just who you are, uh, you know, regardless? Yeah, I, I've, I've been the same person since I've walked in here, to be honest. Um, I love winning, hate losing. And um, at the end of the day, I'm going to go out there and give it all I got to help the team win, whatever the case might be. Um, um, yeah, no, I'm going to go out there <laughs> and, um, yeah, just do what I can to get the job done. So, uh, Doesn't matter who else is in the room. Don't let this influence the answer to your question. But hardest guy on the team to, to face, hardest hitter to face. Uh, that's a hard one. I think there's probably two. I mean, even though he's in the room, I'd say Wade Mackler. He's just an absolute pest to the plate. And then um, Travis Bazan as well. I mean, throughout the, the whole the whole fall, I didn't really know how to get him out. I was throwing him every kind of pitch you can think of, and the guy was still putting the barrel on the ball. So, Practice hasn't even started yet, and that stash is just in <laughs> mid-season form, man. Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. We work on it for like – probably two or three months. So most people, when they work on a stash for two or three months, have a little bit of fullness to it, but the red makes it pop a little bit. I like it. I like it. A um, lot of lot of new faces and a lot of changed roles here, but I guess just looking at this team, what do you like most about this group you guys have have here? Uh, I, I, I honestly, I mean, I've been here for, this is my fourth year here, and this is, I think, top to bottom, the best team we've had. Um, there's uh, the level of work outside of practice uh, this team exhibits is probably higher than any other team I've been on here. Um, you know, for my first three years, you know, after practice, I was never having to fight for a cage and get up there and, you know, half, half the guys are up there hitting after practice. So, um, and that's, I mean, that really shows itself. Uh, guys that work hard after practice and guys that put extra time in are guys that are successful. And when, when you get a vast majority of guys doing that, um, chances are in your favor. What do you attribute that to? Why, why, why is that uh, happening now? What does it say about this group? Uh, I, it was one of the things that we focused um, hard on in the fall was the importance of work and the importance of, of putting the work in uh, outside of practice. But uh, I think probably this group is just a little more receptive than other groups. Um, you know, they, they understood the value of it and we made the point of the value of it and, and, you know, all credit to them. They, they listened and, and I, I really think it's showing paying dividends and, and guys have gotten a lot better this fall. 
Wade, individually, you had a, you know, easily a, a breakout year last year. How much have you kind of seen that um, momentum individually carry over into the fall and, and now as you enter the preseason here? Um, honestly, with uh, the way I go with my work, I'm not really looking for momentum. Um, I'm always looking for a way to get better. Um, so I'm looking for ways to, to overhaul and make a big leap every year. So over the summer, over the fall, you know, I spent, I didn't play summer ball. Uh, I spent the whole time, you know, revamping my swing again, getting even better. Um, but it's, I'm not necessarily just looking for momentum. I obviously have more confidence. Um, so I always believed that I could be a great player, um, but now I know I can be a great player. Um, and I know I can be one of the best players in the country. So that, that confidence piece is a big part of it. Um, but in terms of momentum, I, I wouldn't say there really is any. It's just getting back in the cage, going to work, working on new things. And I really think that getting better um, requires you to do, think, do the things that you don't want to do. Um, like everyone wants to go hit, but not a whole lot of guys want to go home and visualize for an hour. And that's the, that's, those are the things that you know, I look for. Um, like I don't want to go visualize. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go visualize. Uh, maybe you could take us back to uh, an uncomfortable moment, but but the season ender against Dallas Baptist last year, uh, obviously you had it right there. And I imagine being so close left a little bit of a mark and a little bit of motivation. I know afterwards, Mitch kind of looked at you guys, the next group and said, remember this, yeah. uh, you know, maybe put that moment into context and what that, that game, how it got kind of fuels this team, the ending. Uh, it left a really sour taste in our mouth. Um, and I think it's still there. I really do. Um, but I, I think, you know, I talked in the beginning about the value of work and how everyone's been working extremely hard this year. And I think that could be a part of it is that sour taste in our mouth. And, you know, I don't think anyone forgot about that meeting afterwards. And he, he looked at us, the returners, and said, you guys are going to be the leaders next year. And you guys got to, you know, make sure that this next group is not going to make the same mistakes that this previous group made. And I, I think that we've done a good job of that. Okay. Hey, yeah, wait, you, you face this pitching staff, obviously, all fall and practice and stuff. How good can they be and, and what makes the group so tough? Uh, it seems like it might be, uh, you know, one of the best, certainly in the conference, if not if not the country. Yeah, I, I don't think there's a pitching staff better in the country. And uh, I think this is probably the best weekend rotation in the country by a long shot. Um, it's, you know, last year and years prior, uh, there's a lot of non-competitive pitches even in the fall and winter like there was a lot of easy takes um and there really haven't been any easy takes or misses or small misses they're they're a ball and a half off you know pitches that might get called in the pack um they're not missing by a whole lot and the stuff was always there so at bats it, it's it's noticeably more difficult to lay off borderline pitches this fall and that's you know with uh when you put pressure on an opposing team like that an opposing offense to make a decision without the swing. It's when you start getting guys to chase a little more. Um, that's when they start, you know, if you got an umpire giving up, you know, a ball and a half off, you're going to start getting that call if that's your miss now. So, um, yeah, that their potential is the potential to be the best in the country. And, and I think they could make it not even close. What kind of uh, growth have you seen out of Cooper? I mean, Cooper has always been my least favorite at bat uh, in the fall, winter, every year. Here's my freshman year. Um, but he's always had that fastball that kind of jumps on you. And it was, you know, when he was freshman year, he was 88, 90, and it felt like 95. Well, now he's actually 95 and it feels like 98. So that's, that's the biggest jump I've noticed. The stuff's always been there, but, um, the velo, um, like his, like his 88 feels like 95. So what's his 95 feel like? I keep hearing talk about Bazana and, and, him just crushing balls in practice and, and kind of bringing a different, different level there. Could you describe what he brings and what have you seen out of him so far? I mean, he can just fly out hit, man. He's, he's just a good hitter. I mean, when people ask me about him, the first thing I say is just, he's just a good hitter. Um, he doesn't chase when he does chase, he typically puts the ball on it. He, and he does not miss mistakes. And I think a lot of that goes back to his work ethic. He's one of the guys that you see up in the cage all the time. Uh, you know, me and him are, are both kind of, um, we love talking hitting all the time. So he's a guy that I mean, we just talk hitting all day long. And that's, that's something that I think really attributes to success. He's, he's a very mature hitter at a very young age. Um, and I, I think he's the best freshman I've seen here in my three years. Look at those locks, man. Looking good. Where's your stash at? 
Uh, we're, we're bringing it back. It's a work in progress. I uh, didn't want didn't to get too far ahead of myself for the start of the season. You won't peak too early, right? No, not at all. <laughs> I'm going to let it happen when it happens. <laughs> Uh, so Mitch says that, that you're, uh, you know, completely healthy now and back and, and, and I'll go, how long have you been a full go and what have you been able to do, you know, to this point, where are you at kind of in your, in your return? For sure. So yeah, it's, uh, definitely been a long time. Um, missed it all fall and stuff. Been, been full go for a couple of weeks here. been working back into some live ABs and hitting and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, we're uh, we're feel, we're full go, feeling good, just trying to sort of ramp up for the season along with everybody else here. How would you describe your your rehab? I know it's never a, a fun thing, obviously, for anybody that's done it, you know. But uh, you know, was was it difficult? Was it you had your sights set on the future? Like, just lead us through that process for you. For sure. Yeah. Uh, it was definitely challenging. Um, we started PT and stuff a week after my surgery. So the past nine months or so we've been kind of getting after it for PT and rehab and stuff. And, um, first few months was a lot of mobility and strengthening small pieces. And now we're kind of working into the bigger picture of functionality and building strength overall, and just being ready to, to do what my body needs for, for the season. So, um, definitely been, been slow, but we've, taking our time and try to do it right and not have too many setbacks along the way. So um, it's definitely went pretty well. I'd say it's been smooth and um, definitely excited to, to not be doing PT and rehab anymore. So you basically weren't doing any baseball stuff until two weeks ago. Uh, I was doing small stuff over the fall. Um, started doing catch play in probably October. Um, small defensive stuff like that. We were pretty cautious with what I was doing and, and how the shoulder was going to hold up. I think we kind of wanted to see um, how I was going to feel and, and make sure we made it through the fall smoothly and not miss too much time from, from setbacks. So I've um, been doing baseball stuff for a few months now. It's been like full, full go the last couple of weeks, um, kind of getting after it, full team practice with everybody else, which has definitely been nice. And we never really got a look of, of how you heard it. Do you know how you heard it? Was it sliding and, and was it a torn labrum or what was the injury? Yeah. So originally it happened in the summer of 2020, playing summer ball down in Medford, um, still in second, kind of got an inside throw. So I tried to adjust the body to land outside, just kind of landed on it weird and had a weird pop and knew something wasn't right. Uh, but we just kind of rehabbed over the summer and uh, moving into the fall had kind of the exact same thing happen in an inner squad. Um, so we decided to get the MRI in November of 2020. Um, and that did show the, the torn labrum. So kind of had the ultimatum of where I'd rather play the season um, than get the surgery. Um, kind of when I found out, um, felt like I'd put in a lot of work and was ready to, to perform this past spring. So um, put the surgery off and uh, tried to make it through the full season. Just had a couple setbacks, and the second one uh, happened against UCI. Um, and then after that one, I kind of got some numbness and, and tingling in the hand after I'd hit, and it was just kind of something I didn't want to want to have be long term. So decided to get the the surgery kind of in the the end of May. Um, obviously, shut the season down, which was was disappointing uh, for me and for everybody. I think. Um, but I think in the long run, I think I made the right decision getting the surgery when I did um, be back full go for the full season this year, which will, which will be good for sure. Jacob, with regard to the postseason last year, obviously you weren't able to participate mm -hmm. in the regional. And then between that and, and the way it ended in the regional final, how hungry does that make you to get back to the postseason and, and ultimately get back to Omaha? For sure. So, um, Personally speaking, for me, that's it was it was hard to watch the team go out and and go to Fort Worth and play and play their hearts out. Um, wish wish I could have been there for sure. Um, obviously, that was the the goal all last year was to make it to the postseason, uh, make it to Omaha. So um, I think for me personally, missing out on that last year uh, makes me even more hungry this year to to get the opportunity to go to Omaha and and compete all season long. So. Um, I think from the team aspect, we're kind of in the same boat. I think anything short of Omaha is a failure for us. So um, we have high hopes for this year, high expectations. And I think we're going to put in all the, all the work we need to, to to make that happen.
Hey, with the success that you had, you know, kind of blowing up like you did last year, uh, what did that do for you confidence wise uh, and, and kind of set the table for this year? I mean, I'm sure you you always had the confidence, but to see the results kindly kind of produce, you know, what, what does that do for you moving into this next season? For sure. So uh, last season, the, the confidence was kind of built on the work that I put in in the fall and the cages and stuff and kind of getting to know myself and um, bettering my swing and myself as a, as a player and a person. So um, the confidence wasn't something I just found from some short-term success in the season. It was something that I've been working towards and, and eventually reached uh, through a lot of work. So um, that that's going to carry over this year for sure. I've been putting in a lot of time in the cages and stuff again this year and Feel like the body's in a really good spot so I think the confidence is going to carry over um I really felt like that was the biggest piece of the game last year when the confidence was was high it was a lot easier to perform and, and be my best self uh day in and day out last year do you feel like uh position wise uh center is where you're where you're at now I know you kind of went back and forth last year a little bit yeah so this year uh, I think I'll, I'll play a majority of my innings in the center um, definitely gonna be playing some first base too from from what it looks like um, I think it's gonna kind of come down to a matchup thing and, and what we're liking so um, I kind of expect to to see myself in, in both spots this year is there a spot in the order you like hitting over another spot or do you not really care doesn't matter to me too much um, whatever the, the coaching staff thinks is going to be most productive is, is fine with me. Um, hit lead off most of my life. So anywhere in the first five, I'm super comfortable with. Um, yeah. I mean, as long as I'm in the order, I'm not, I'm not complaining at all. I kind of ask, uh, you know, Wade about, you know, facing the staff and, and what that was like, you probably haven't really gotten that chance here, <laughs> maybe the last couple of <laughs> weeks a little bit, but, uh, I guess just from your experiences and seeing that staff, how would you describe, you know, them and, and the difficulty it is for a hitter facing them? For sure. So uh, they're competitive. They're, they're competitive day in and day out. And I think we have a really good staff this year that's going to challenge a lot of teams. And um, it's, it's, it's exciting to see them go to work. I mean, our staff this year works extremely hard. And um, I know they're doing the right stuff to get ready for the season. And it's, I'm, I'm super excited to watch them go compete against another team. Uh, it's a little easier to be a hitter when you've you've seen a guy 20 times and you, you know exactly how he's going to attack you and what he throws. So um, our offense has definitely found some success against them this year, but um, I'm excited to watch them go out and compete against some other teams. Is there a guy, uh, staff or lineup or position-wise, whatever, a newcomer that has caught your eye that kind of every time he's out there, you, you sort of take note of him? Yeah, I'm sure this is an answer that you've probably already got, but Travis Mazzana coming in as a freshman, he's he's already made a big splash with us. I mean, kid works extremely hard, and um, he's got a great feel for the game. Um, he's probably the first freshman I've I've been around with the maturity level on the field to, to really step in and I think be a really big performer for us. So um, he's definitely a guy I would look out for. Um, I mean, the kid can flat out hit, so I'm excited to, to watch him go out this year and, and see how he does. Uh, back to your, your shoulder, are you still working on strengthening uh, all of that and, and, and building strength or are you pretty good at with where things are at right now? Or are you still kind of not rehabbing, but you know what I mean? Are you still working there? For sure. So yeah, I'm still doing PT twice a week. Um, I think for, for this season, it's going to be kind of an ongoing battle to, to make sure I stay in a good spot with the shoulder. Um, I've already, like I said, put in a lot of work to get it to where, where I'm ready to go and ready to play, but uh I think that's something we're going to try to stay on top of and, and make sure we, we keep it in a good spot this year. So um, definitely going to look to keep adding strength to it and, and be ready to make it through a full season this year.